We are here at Harry Tarantula for the second cup of this tournament vlog video. We're playing, of course, again, you know, you know what I'm playing today though. I switched up the list, not the same 60s yesterday. Iced coffee right here. We got the junior chicken for lunch and uh, round one's gonna start pretty soon. Game number one just wrapped up and we played against Iron Valiant. This was basically the LEIC finals that's happening right now as I'm recording this, but here at Locals. And uh, I have not made that many misplays in a long time. It was, a, oh, it, was, it was a game, it was a game, I'll tell you that much. I had a really good start. I even had the Squawk and the Raikou out there and everything and for whatever reason, I turned off my brain and I decided to use Tandem Unit to grab a Mareep and put it on my bench and that was the start of a slow and painful demise. On their turn one, they were able to pretty much instantly KO my Mareep by doing the Iron Valiant thing, switching around their three Iron Valiants. They actually hit two VIPs their turn one, which is kind of nuts. They knocked out my Mareep before doing any attacks and then they cleaned it up with a Magma Basin plus a Jet Energy to their Entei and swung into my Mew EX I left in the active, taking three prizes on their first turn. And I was just like, damn, that is, I deserve, I deserve that. And I didn't learn my lesson from that because from then on, Bruh. I proceeded to set up my board again and everything. I got the return KOs and all that. But this time around, because sometimes you want to hit that 230 for the Entei, I got possessed again to play my Zapdos from Pokemon Go onto the bench. They capitalized on that. On to their final turn. They have one prize left. I have three. They managed to smoke my Iron Valiant EX the turn before with Radiant Charizard, which was really painful. And then on their last turn, they had their Entei that had uh, 230 damage counters on it, or 223, 20, 200, they had five HP left, right? They played Lost Vacuum. And the Lost Vacuum they used was to to knock out their own Entei, give me two prizes, but because they knocked out their Entei, they got to bring out their Iron Valiant into the active Hi. and put the last two damage counters for the finishing blow on the Zapdos. Hard L, an L I absolutely deserve for over benching. Getting into top cut after losing the first round, if you guys don't know, is really, really hard uh, because your resistance is so poor after taking that first L. And if you take the second L, it's pretty much a death sentence trying to get the top cut. Because even if you win the, win the next four games, depending on how the resistances match up for your opponent's games and all that kind of stuff, there's a very low chance you make it into the top cut, even going forward too, by losing the first two rounds. So we gotta try and win these next five to secure our top cut. I gotta drink this caffeine, man. I, I gotta wake up. I'm making the dumbest misplays. Round number two just went down and we played against Callie Moore again and I felt bad for them because the last time I played them was at the uh, the 70 player comfy challenge and they were playing Palkia V-Star and today they're still playing Palkia V-Star. I think they're just such a big fan of Palkia V-Star just like I am with Maridon. This time though they made some adjustments to their deck. They added some Iron Valiants. So when they started Iron Valiant I was a little scared because they had just lost to an Iron Valiant a second ago but then they benched their Palkia and I was like okay so it is, it is definitely Palkia. Their turn one was kind of slow. They didn't get too set up. And when I saw my opening hand, I was like, wow, I'm gonna have a pop off of a turn one. New EX in the active. And then I also had cards like double turbo energy in my hand, Arvin, Beach Courts, energies. And uh, yeah, so I just used Arvin and grab battle VIP pass, which I have in the deck today, along with a, uh, a forest seal stone. Battle VIP is amazing because it really lets you set up so you can grab a Squawk and a Maridon and then fill your board. Then put the Seal Stone on the V Pokemon that you choose, which was Raikou in this choice because that's the ideal attacker as a backup attacker here. Didn't go for the super greedy Iron Hands, Ampute very much turn one play. I played it safe. I went for a turn two Photon Blaster with Maridon EX onto their Iron Valiant because uh, it was just a safer play in my route. Talk V Star does fall once again. It's crazy. It's because Palkia Vistar used to be one of the best decks in the game, but now Maridon, I consider the best deck in the game. And we just got word a second ago that Maridon EX won the Latin American International Championship. So I'm very happy about that. I called it out publicly. I told everyone, hey, Maridon's going to win this IC. Just like I said in Toronto, it was going to win, win uh, the Toronto Regional. So I am two for two for meta forecast or champion predictions. I'm getting pretty good at this. I'm having a lot of fun playing Maridon. I'm happy to see it do well at the international level 
and it's really scary because they just released the brand new Maridon League Battle Deck, and it's amazing. So we're opening that up on the channel uh, this week. The video should be up. If you guys want to see the Maridon League Battle Deck review unboxing, I'll leave a link down below. But yeah, it's getting windy out here. It is also getting a little chilly. So I think round three is going to start in like 15 minutes. We have some time to chill, but I'm going to relax. And uh, yeah, I'll just relax and check out the competition, see what the decks the other people are playing today. That way I can try and figure out, at least get some knowledge, whether or not I want to go first or second into a couple of the potential matchups. Because first or second is kind of important, especially because, you know, going second means you get to turn to attack. But some decks you want to go first against, like Shen Pao. Round number three is about to start. We're playing against the homie, Ethan. Hi. And uh, what deck are you playing, Ethan? Lost Box. That was a trick question. I doubt he's playing Lost Box. But yeah, we're going to have some fun. He's the homie, and uh, I'm playing not Zacian today, so that's what I'll give him. The round three just wrapped up, and we played against my friend Ethan, as you guys saw. And uh, he was playing some version of Lost Box. I didn't really get to see the, the full deck, you feel me? Um, I got to go second, because I chose to go second. And I did the turn one Ampia very much, very easily. I didn't have to even use my Seal Stone. Hit Generator for two onto, uh, onto Iron Hands EX. I uh, drew with Restart from my Mew EX. First card was Double Turbo Energy, slap that on. And I said Ampia very much two times in a row, and he didn't let me say it a third time because he scooped it up real quick. So shout out to Ethan. Love you, bro. Thank you for the dub. Unfortunately, you just you hate to see it. He also played a Maridon in round one as well, which is crazy because Callie, the person I just played, also has played a Maridon another round earlier. So yeah, I guess there's a couple Maridons running around. I want to see my fellow brothers do well and then hopefully beat them at the top. <laughs> but yeah, round four is coming up. We're bouncing back. We got that win streak going. We're 2-1. Two, two Let's, let's see how things go. I have a bunch of friends here too, so maybe we'll do a couple little interviews with some of the homies here as well. So since we have 20 minutes until the next round, I figure we should interview some homies. So we got the friend Gio right here. And Gio, what deck are you playing today? This deck, I built it at first as a funny deck. I'm running the Iron Valiant mm -hmm. with Entei, of course. I just started playing it. I had the pieces for it, and I just came to love it. Started with the Urshifu variant, wasn't too much of a fan of it. But the Entei version is just, you can get the, if you go second, you can get the first attack off. Even if you want to go first, if they put down like just like a more Pico to start, you can Yoga Loop them because any 70 HP Pokemon, you can't get them, you don't want to fill with four Valiants on the bench, mm -hmm. essentially. So you want to get the three down. And with the three, you do 60 damage, 20 per Tachyon bits. So I like to go into the triple switch and then yoga loop for a second turn now. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've been doing great. I placed top eight yesterday. I came six. I went 4-2-1 at Manta's Cup, the best I've ever done. Nice. Uh, so far, I went from 20 points to start the weekend to 53, which is, for a new player like me, I'm very proud of my progress. How long progress. have you been playing for? I've been playing for only about four months now. Oh, I, I started at the end of the summer, and yeah. honestly, I had some card experience. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh Yu for a long time, mm -hmm. tier zero format. not fan of it so came over to Pokemon and I'm honestly loving it love the growth it's a tough city Christian said it many yeah. different times yeah it's the sweatiest city to play in but it's made the growth so much better specifically just enjoy the game start it off get a hand go to pre-releases even play meme decks if you're a competitive person like me you don't want to get frustrated and flustered because you just you're gonna make misplays and you're not gonna think straight go to locals go to have fun see the decks pick up play what you like biggest thing for me too is play what you like okay. don't look at meta don't look at any anything else it's yeah. what you enjoy playing and what you're comfortable with stick with it. round number four is about to start in just a second but we have a quick winners interview with the winner of the junior division a repeat interview as well we got the homie Brian hey Brian nice to Oscar Automat that's now two back-to-back -back. Yep. that's a challenge and a cup yeah you're farming so what deck did you play today Mew V Max Mew V Max which version the DTE Fusion, Fusion Mew yeah. uh, did you have any spicy text in there like the Excel Gores we've been seeing yeah, on stream Excel so what were your matchups today round one Roaring Moon Roaring Moon that's a good matchup with the Excel Gores right yeah I had to overcome it against Roaring Moon I used Excel Gore and then he just conceded because uh, it was he only set up two and then I knocked out two. Game two was against another. Another Roaring Moon. Yeah. Oh, so those Excel girls are paying off, right? Yeah. yeah. Third round was Lost Box Charizard. Mm -hmm. 
I won barely because I just tanked with my Mew. Good job today, man. Good job. Are you planning to play Mew in the future or was this like a kind of a meta call pick for it today? It was a meta call. I just picked this deck out last night. Last night? Yeah. Have you practiced with it much or have you played against it enough time that you no. have like no? It's just Mew. Mew's just Yeah, Mew's, Mew's so easy. Yeah, Mew's easy. <laughs> Round four is about to start and boy oh boy, we are in for a fun matchup because the storyline from yesterday continues. We're playing against the homie Justin right here. Going on. So we have a grudge match. It's time to try and get my revenge on him for yesterday. We'll see what goes down. It's gonna be close. I can already tell it's gonna be a close game, but we'll check in with you guys right after this match. So the last time I saw Justin, he was playing the Lost Tina deck where he did me with the turn one path. Today, he was playing Miraidon. So we had a fun mirror match and uh, I don't think we've ever done the, the Dawn mirror match. It was definitely an eventful game. Um, he won the coin toss, which was everything in this matchup. It, it, it set the chain of events into motion. I started Squawkabilly as my active. He started Mew EX and Maridon on the bench. I drew my card and my hand was amazing as long as you have another Pokemon in your hand that you can bench or if you're going second. It was like the dream hand if you were going second. And uh, I went first, of course. I had to attach my only charm because this deck is only playing one charm today to squawk a Billy, which really doesn't do anything, but I'm like, hey, better just put on something for fun. And then uh, I had to squawk my amazing hand. So the, the card you're seeing on screen right now was the hand. We had the one research in my deck, the one peony in my deck, one of the three Arvins in my deck, and then I, of course, had to waste the charm. So that was the most painful squawk and seize I've ever had to do in my entire life. Bruh. And because those cards were the ones that were chosen as the fated discard pile selectees, Ooh. it was really hard to bounce back from that. So he took a one prize KO on me going on his second turn. He hit the double Jenny on his uh, his first generator, which was insane. And he attacked with, I believe, his Maridon onto my little baby Mareep. And I needed my Mareep, man. It's part of my game plan, but it's better than giving up a two prizer. And then on my turn, or before he ended his turn, he played Path to the Peak. So I had now like next to no out to really play the game. Um, that, that was painful as well. And we went back and forth for a little bit, just draw pass, draw pass, draw pass, because we couldn't attack at some point, which is pretty hilarious. And I just essentially wasn't able to set up the extra attackers that I needed to have on to the board. And at the very last turn of the game, he had what he needed. He dropped the Flying Pikachu V on the bench, put a Seal Stone, and uh, grab the boss's orders with that to knock out my any Pokemon on the bench for right game. So good game, Justin. I wish my deck today was the deck I played yesterday because then it would have been a much more formidable matchup because that deck today is much more uh, aggressive turn two and you really gotta you gotta not squawk away all your valuable cards. I even squawked away a super rod too. So like my recovery was gone too. I was just playing from the back foot. So nothing really much you can do. If it was the best of three, catch me again, Justin, at the best of three, I'm ready for you. But painful L, we are now, I believe, 2-2. Two, two. two wins, two losses. Uh, I think we're out of contention for top eight. I think? I think we are. But we got two more rounds left to go. We could still go 4-2 uh, and get top 16. Maybe bubble into top eight. I know at least one person will likely bubble into top eight at 4-2, maybe two. We're gonna play out the rest of the tournament, see what we can do. Round number five just wrapped up and we played against a Charizard EX deck. And Charizard EX is a scary matchup for Maridon, uh, especially because they don't have Zero Aura in the deck. The person who actually used this deck to get 11th place at LAIC, Anil, he even said that on his Twitter post, if you're playing Charizard, just scoop it up and grab some lunch because it's a hard, hard game. I managed to clutch up in the end. I went second because I won the coin toss and I got to use Ampia very much twice in the game. And then by the very end of the game, I used a, uh, well, I would have used a Raichu with Dynamic Spark for the big knockout onto Charizard. But the deck struggles against it sometimes because if you lose your Raichu and you have no way of getting it back, 
getting that one shot off is very, very hard. I've done some decision making with the deck and uh, even my own personal build that I've been doing, taking out one of the Raikus and putting in a Raichu instead, just because that one shot capability is a crucial, crucial thing against a lot of decks, including Lost Tina and Charizard, two of the hardest, hardest matchups. And it can also come clutch against Gardevoir EX, hitting for that 310. And of course, Mew, if there's still a couple of Mews running around. But yeah, we're feeling good. We're 3-2. We'll see what the standings are like in just a second. All right, round number six is about to start. And we're playing one of my friends, Felix. So this will be fun. He usually plays Guardi. And my current win rate against him, I think I'm like seven wins, one loss. So we'll see how this one goes. Round number six just wrapped up. We played against the homie Felix, and it was a one turn game. He had Zacian V in the active, had to use Roar of the Sword. You look at my hand, oh my goodness. It was the most broken hand in my life. I could have attacked with Raichu for like five or six energies. It was so busted. Um, so I just attacked with Maridon, KO the Zacian. It's so funny. Maridon. Killing Zacian, two of my favorite Pokemons, but this time the Zacian's not a metal type Pokemon. So now, for prizing, we did get $25 store credits and a play pack. The ranking we got, I'll tell you guys in just a second, out of uh, out of 37 players. So I'll tell you while we open up this play pack. Comment down below, Maridon gang, if you made it to the very end, just like the other tournament vlogs. And if you want to see a Toronto regional vlog or a Pittsburgh regional vlog, I'll have those pop up on screen or in the description. You can binge watch those. Out of 37 players with a record of four wins and two losses, we got 10th place. But here we go. We got a Lunatone, Vesuvian Heavy Ball, Archaeops, Trash, Ooh, a Jacques Hollow, and a Cramorant Hollow. Not too shabby. And one lucky person take that code, click on screen to watch another tournament vlog. Peace.